Good afternoon and welcome to another Waukegan History Museum Lunch and Learn. My name is Ty Rohr. I'm manager of cultural arts for the Waukegan Park District and also work on behalf of the Waukegan Historical Society. Happy Father's Day weekend to all of you dads out there. Uh, today is also Juneteenth, a day to celebrate the ending of slavery in the United States. But it is also mid-June and we're still in the COVID-19 pandemic, unfortunately. And we're all waiting for that vaccine. We're waiting for that cure. So today I picked a topic where people were looking for anything to help them feel better and recover from numerous ailments in the past. Today I'll be talking mostly about the time period of the 1870s through the early 1890s the time right before the era of many medical advancements. So life in the 1870s. Well, imagine you are sick, you are desperate for a cure, there are all these different advertisements on all different types of things for you to purchase, and they all claim that they're going to fix you of something. Now, one of these advertisements that you might see were of artesian or mineral springs. And while Keegan was not the inventor of this type of marketing or profiting off of mineral spring water, but Waukegan definitely did its part in supporting that movement, that era. So this really all stemmed from hydrotherapy or water cure, and really just the necessity for people to find something to help them feel better. Some places capitalized off hot springs to build spas and resorts where one's soul and body could be restored. Other places looked to market and tout their natural mineral spring waters for their healing abilities. And that's what Waukegan did. Waukegan ended up with a handful of the artesian mineral springs. And the mineral spring era in Waukegan was kicked off by Calvin Parks Sr., or C.C. Parks, as you'll usually see. Now, Parks was a lawyer who had come to Waukegan in 1849. But around 1874, C.C. Park Sr. purchased 23 acres of land on the north side of Waukegan, on the bluff. This land was known as Glen Flora. The property had the Glen Flora Ravine flowing through it. A spring was found on the property, and Park's sons, C.C. Park Jr. and R.H. Park, started promoting this water found in the spring. The spring was on the east side of Sheridan Road, just slightly north of today's Vista East Hospital, or many of you might know it as Victory Hospital in the past. So here looking at a little article here um, in the Waukegan Weekly Gazette, December 5th, 1874, the Glen Flora Mineral Springs. Voluntary testimonials as to the efficiency of the Glen Flora mineral waters and eradicating disease continue to reach Mr. Parks. Of a dozen or more than that have been received during the present week. The following are handed in for publication. Dear Sir, I received the water from the Glen Flora Spring sent me on the 5th of November and have found great relief from drinking it. I had much trouble with my kidneys and am confident this mineral water will cure me. Yours truly, William H. Wrigley. So this is as early as 1874. Testimonials are coming in from folks that, well, the water that is being sent to them from Glen Flora, well, it is curing them. And I'll talk about the different, different diseases in a minute that uh, are being said that will be fixed because of this water. Here in this picture, this is circa eight, uh, 
1880. It could be a little earlier, though. Um, it's titled Dedication. Um, but you can see what happens. The Glen Flora Springs, and I'm going to talk about all of them here, but basically they start out as touting their, the waters having uh, medical curing abilities. So they start sending the water out to people. But soon they start to change their marketing just a little bit. Yes, they want people to buy the water, but they also want people to come to the water. So different resorts are made. And for the Glen Flora Spring, they really change the landscape, make it more of a park-like setting, um, even putting in a, an artificial uh, goldfish pond because they're touting that even being on the water, breathing in the water is good for your health. And here in the picture, you can see the well there uh, with a few gentlemen there uh, holding some glasses of water. Looks very clean and pure to me. So they are advertising here, Parks uh, Sons, they are advertising to come to the Glenflora Spring to get well. And they even build a large hotel, or at least attempt to build a large hotel. And this hotel was said to be immense in size. It was located opposite of the springs on the west side of Sheridan Road. And uh, construction started in 1876. And it was being built by a Mr. Hyde, a businessman from Chicago. Uh, and it seems that uh, he was working with possibly the parks. It's hard to tell, actually. Uh, but but uh, Mr. Hyde runs into some financial problems. Uh, construction comes to a halt. And it looks like the hotel is really never finished. Um, and eventually it was destroyed by a fire in 1883. Um, but the reason why they were wanting to build a hotel was, well, the Glen Flora Spring was being advertised around the country as a resort. I've got uh, from 1875 coming out of Boston, uh, the third edition by John Batchelder called Popular Resorts and How to Reach Them said Glen Flora Mineral Springs, the waters which have been for perhaps untold ages gurgling from their cool, rocky depths and flowing in miniature rivulets into Lake Michigan have this year been proven beyond question by scientific analysis to be of the most valuable medicinal character. The Glen Flora Springs are easy of access being located on the line of the Milwaukee Division of the Chicago and Northwestern Railway. About 16 trains pass and repass between the cities of Chicago and Milwaukee daily. The railroad station, Glen Flora, is only about one quarter of a mile from the springs, which are reached by a newly graded road leading up uh, the bluff in close proximity to them. The location for picturesque beauty and romantic surroundings is unsurpassed in this country. They are nestled in a beautiful ravine or glen, originally named Floral Glen, because of the remarkable profusion of wildflowers which grow and thrive spontaneously from end to end of its labyrinthian traceries. So again, that was coming out of a, really a resort guide out of Boston. And what people are finding out or being told is you come to the Glen Flora Springs and it will drink the water and it has cured people with diabetes, uh, Bright's disease, gravel, and then to look that up, I forgot, I don't know what that is, uh, chronic inflammation of the bladder, dropsy fevers, and the list goes on and on and on. And what about this analysis that was mentioned in there? Well, in 1874, uh, water from the Glenflora Springs was sent to um, 
the office of James Blaney and Sons. They were analytical and consulting chemists in Chicago. So they found um, really high numbers of bicarbonate of lime and bicarbonate of magnesia. And what they reported, this water is entirely free from sulfate of lime. They said the presence of sulfate of lime considered so injurious to the system, which analysis shows is found in many of our so-called mineral waters, has induced the analyzing chemist to call a special attention to its absence from this water, as the following letter from the late Professor Blaney will show. In the, in the letter, he writes to R.H. Parks, in response to your inquiry regarding the medicinal properties of the water we have just analyzed for you, we express it as our opinion that the bicarbonates of soda, lime, and magnesia give to the water and acid properties, which would doubtless be useful in all forms of dips, dip, dyspepsia and disorders of the urinary excretion. The same ingredients with the sulfate of soda and chloride of sodium would act together as mildly laxative and diuretic and hence be useful in cases of constipation and of gout, rheumatism, etc. From the above analysis, it will be seen that the Glen flora possesses in perfect combination the mineral properties most essential to the human organism. And the following is taken from the pharmacist out of Chicago. Maybe it's a looks like it's a magazine, some kind of a periodical of sorts. It said at a meeting of the New York Alumni Association of the Philadelphia College of Pharmacy, Mr. Welcome, secretary, exhibited some Glen Flora mineral water from the spring at Waukegan, Illinois, stating that it has gained an extended reputation for its direct action upon the kidneys. Its main constituents are bicarbonates of magnesia, lime, soda, and iron. So all of this water, of course, sounds wonderful, especially if you have some of these uh, problems that you're looking for a cure. So at this point, uh, it's like mid-1870s, you could buy 40-gallon barrels for $5.00. Um, five gallon bottles in crates for $1.50. Uh, so pr pretty good uh, price there for your Glen Flora Springs water, especially um, if it cures you of all those things that were being talked about. Now the Glen Flora Springs actually kind of goes on longer than some of the others I'm going to mention here. The Glen Flora Springs actually operates through 1915. So it operates through the debacle of the uh, hotel, uh, but still um, it's really considered to be the most famous of the Waukegan Springs. Um, and it, as you look at some of the pictures there, they, they did a beautiful job of uh, creating a park-like atmosphere for people to come and enjoy the waters. Now, Glen Flora Spring was the most well-known, but it was the Quintet Springs on Judge McAllister's 100-acre farm that was touted as having the higher mineral content and, in turn, more medicinal value. Much of McAllister's farm today, including the location of the Quintet, or also known as the McAllister Springs, well, that location today is beautiful Roosevelt Park. Here in this picture, it's still beautiful and stunning, but we're seeing it in the wintertime. The Quintet Springs, or McAllister Springs, consisted of five springs, hence the name Quintet, and they were just a few feet from each other, but each differing in mineral contents and thusly medicinal values. Each spring was touted to cure different diseases. Judge McAllister turned his grounds into his resort in 1888 
as his biz business continued to grow. And he also built a large resort hotel. But unlike with Glen Flora, McAllister actually built his and operated it. Now, McAllister was doing this because he believed that his springs would make Waukegan to be known as a great health resort city. And he was wanting to attract people from all around the world. And for a time, it looked like McAllister was right with the dream of turning Waukegan into a health resort destination. When he opens the, uh, the hotel, it's actually just too small. It outgrows pretty quick, and he's having to turn people away. So he expands uh, this, his operations, his hotel in 1890, and by then he is able to accommodate 250 guests at a time. Here I'll read a little bit of uh, information, insight gathered from the 1877, the past and present of Lake County, Illinois. The McAllister Springs are a marvel in nature. They are a cluster of five distinct springs within a few feet of each other, each possessing the most valuable mineral and medicinal properties, yet differing from each other, as shown by chemical analysis and taste forming a combination suitable for the cure of more varied class of diseases than may other known springs, and having unparalleled success in the short time succeeding their discovery in curing the diseases for which they are severely recommended. And again, just like with the Glenflora Springs, they're really touting um, the chemical analysis uh, showing that the water at the Quintet Springs are superior to others. Um, and then they're listing all these different diseases, different problems that the water will cure. Another of Waukegan's mineral springs was the Saganash Spring. This was located on the south side of the Waukegan River in downtown Waukegan. This was owned by Elijah Haynes. The spring had been known for some time by the earliest settlers and the Native Americans before them. And here I'll read a part of an article that was found in a scrapbook that was put together by Hobart Yard. Maybe on one of these... Uh, Lunch and Learns, I'll focus on Hobart Yard and all the valuable information that we gathered from his uh, scrapbooks and diaries. So from the Yard scrapbook, we have a Waukegan Weekly Gazette article, Waukegan Mineral Springs, the Saga Nash. It reads, in the last number of the legal advisor, we find a history of the spring located on the south side of the river in this city owned by the Honorable E. M. Haynes. This spring has a history connected there with which is quite interesting. It is located at Waukegan in this state and was known as a mineral spring at the earliest settlement of that place. When the present proprietor took possession of the property where the spring is situated many years ago, the ground then being still in the state of nature, he discovered nearby a considerable space of ground that had been the planting ground of the Indians, the corn hills still remaining visible. There was also a well-beaten path, or trail, passing close by the spring, across which the outlet of it flowed, all the indications being that the spring had been much frequented in the past. He therefore instituted inquiry into its history among those who would be apt to know something of the early history of this locality, of which there were many persons living at that day. The information there, therefore in was in this effect. And you see Haynes uh, is, writes our first history. So he's, a, he's our first historian in Waukegan. He's our first teacher. Uh, he, he is a there in Little Fort, Waukegan, in the early days, uh, collecting these stories. Uh, so I'll continue here. What Haynes found was, 
when the Indian chief Billy Caldwell, whose Indian name was Saganash, came and settled at Chicago soon after the War of 1812, he proceeded and explored the country in every direction, especially along the lake shore upon the north. Waukegan, then known to the whites as Little Fort, had from the earliest time been noted as a favorite point for the Indians. Caldwell was attracted to this locality where the Indians were always found in considerable numbers and where during his explorations he spent much time with his people dwelling at and about this point. He is spoken of by those who knew him as a man of intelligence and much practical experience in life. This spring, which was convenient to the Indian inhabitations around, attracted the attention of Caldwell as a mineral spring possessing excellent qualities. His partiality for the water on account of its medicinal qualities being noticed by the Indians, they always referred to it as Saganash Maskinabee. These exploring trips by Caldwell were often hunting excursions and in later years, as the country commenced to be peopled by the whites, he would invite some or more of them to join. And then there was also the Waukegan Magnesia Springs. Its entrance was, a low, was originally west of Bluff Street and Chapel Street. It was owned and developed by John F. Powell. Uh, this spring was up and running by at least 1875, because we do find um, in the Waukegan Weekly Gazette uh, a little advertisement for it. So like these other springs, the Waukegan Magnesia Mineral Springs in Waukegan will cure heartburn, nervousness, uh, liver complaint, constipation, and the list goes on. So in 1876, a little booklet here reads, uh, Mr. John F. Powell, the discoverer and owner of the spring, um, located half mile a distance from town. Uh, it is a lovely ravine surrounded by the mo most picturesque scenery and enclosed um, has, the, has a Pagoda, which has been uh, completed with the finest architectural effect. So we're looking at that here. Um, the seats will be of irregular circular form, the magic form. So there's, there's a lot going on here besides just uh, drinking the water, of course. Uh, we have a wonderful uh, little booklet here, except from what I just read. Uh, here we see a picture of John F. Powell. Uh, Powell is a person that gives the land that becomes uh, the Park District's first park, Powell Park, um, which eventually uh, is renamed as Bradbury Park, just as a, as a side. Um, so in this booklet here, I'll read a few different things. The first, uh, right inside the cover, Magnesia Mineral Springs. The water of this spring possesses great curative qualities and is surpassed by none. It is made up almost entirely of bicarbonates, causing its beneficial and healthy actions upon the digestive and secretionary organs. And then there are some testimonials throughout. But first, the purpose for the use of the water. No one need be afraid of its use. It is a safe remedy even for the weakest and most sensitive. It is healthful and invigorating. To ensure the best results, the following hints will be useful. Drink from one half to two goblets one hour before each meal, and the same on retiring. Unless on a weak stomach, then take smaller quantities. It then may be increased gradually as suits the patient. Be sure to have a fixed hour daily, either in the morning or evening, for an evacuation of the bowels. Never fail to meet this call of nature regularly. 
um, for diseases of the urinary organs, take same as above and increase every day until two or more goblets be taken at a time. When the great thirst common to kidney disease disappears, the quantity may be reduced. The water, though, should not be too cold when drank. If drank warm, it is more effective. See, I didn't get that with some of the other uh, places. They didn't say if it should be hot or cold. And then the testimonials are really amazing. Um, he, he basically is getting his friends. Um, it's mostly folks from Waukegan, but some from Chicago and a few other surrounding communities. But they're letting everybody know all the problems that they have. Um, constipation, um, rheumatism, hemorrhoids, asthma, kidney problems, and just it, it's just amazing how open they are with these problems. Uh, so Mrs. C.J. Whitney wrote, I have been afflicted with constipation and piles for the last 12 years, have doctored by a good many different physicians, and used a great many patent medicines, but have had no permanent relief. I have now been using your magnesia mineral spring water for about six weeks and find that it has done me so much good that I write this for the benefit of the public, knowing that there are hundreds in this very city suffering from the worst of all diseases, piles. I would say to them all, try the magnesia mineral spring water, for I am better than I have been in 10 years, and I think in a short time I shall be entirely cured if I continue its use, which I certainly shall. Maria Ruschbacher said, I tender you my most sincere thanks for the benefits I have received from the use of your magnesia spring water, which I have used for the short period of six weeks. I have been afflicted for 10 years with the rheumatism, and for the last three years I was not able to go up or down stairs and was so nervous that I could not sleep nights. But since I commenced using your valuable mineral water, I can enjoy a good night's rest and am so relieved with rheumatoid pains that I am able to take a long walk and outdoor pleasure that were not before enjoyed. I would advise all those suffering from rheumatism and nervous debility to test the merits of your magnesia mineral water without delay. Joseph Palmer said, this is to testify to the efficacy of your magnesia mineral water as a diuretic. My boy, George H., owing to a affection of the kidneys arising, it is supposed, from the compulsory retention of water at school when young, has for five years been able to have but one passage of water a day, attended with excruciating pain. Since drinking your mineral water, he has been restored to comparative health, having now hardly any trouble with his urinary organs. And I'm not going to read them all, um, but we do have uh, Dr. Bullock here giving an endorsement. He wrote, uh, the mineral water of the spring at present, known as the Waukegan Magnesia Mineral Spring, contains the highest medicinal properties and are an invaluable aid to all persons suffering from affections of the stomach, kidneys, or liver. The great benefit uh, drivable to invalids from the free use of these waters induces me cheerfully to endorse their recommendation and to authorize uh, the use of it in my name. Now, they sure do a good job there with their marketing. People were coming. Uh, these springs, they were popular. Um, but really, it's interesting to start to see that the springs themselves start to market against each other. The proprietors weren't just trying to get people to come to Waukegan, but they were trying to get them to only come to their springs. So as an, as an example, the Glenflora Spring and the Waukegan Magnesia Springs, they openly dissed each other. Uh, the Glenflora Spring claimed that their water had the most bicarbonates in Waukegan. Um, and, well, they were saying in some of their ads that 
there's far surpassed what was found at the Waukegan Magnesia Spring. When I actually look at the numbers, um, I believe though it looks like that Haynes's Saga Nash Spring actually uh, looks like it has the most uh, bicarbonates in it. Um, but definitely uh, Powell with the Magnesia Spring and the Parks Brothers with the Glen Flora Springs, they were the main advertisers and the main, main one pushing for resorts. So not just selling the water to people, but getting and, and attracting people to come to Waukegan to them. By 1899, the Moran brothers were operating the Waukegan Magnesia Spring, and they had changed the name. For them, it became known as Glenrock Springs. And Henry Wirtz would eventually acquire the Glenrock Springs, and from there, the local nostalgic Glenrock Soda would be born. You see, some mineral springs companies like Glenrock, well, they were adding flavored soda to their sales offerings. And Glenrock uh, still uh, fondly remembered uh, from Waukeganites from the past. The era of Waukegan's Mineral Spring Resorts would start to come to an end in the early 1890s as medicinal science advanced and actual health cures were starting to be found. Some of the springs continue to operate though, but now as a clean source of drinking water. With the industrial age in Waukegan starting in the 1890s with the sugar refinery pictured here, folks in Waukegan started to grow concerned about pollution. Uh, there were, even in these early days, concerns about uh, what factories like the sugar refinery were uh, putting into the lake, uh, with, with Lake Michigan still being the main source for, of the drinking water for the people of Waukegan, just like today. And we even see uh, some more evidence of this, aside from newspapers um, here. And I did, uh, this was covered uh, in the uh, the sugar refinery lunch and learn too, in a little more detail. Uh, but the George Wheeler diary from 1905, um, basically in there it's saying that the, uh, the lake water is bad, looks bad and smells bad uh, because of the sugar refinery, uh, the intake pipe of the, the old sugar refinery there. Um, the water smells just as the old refinery smells. Um, M is drinking from the artesian well and the rest of the family from Glenflora. So this family wasn't relying on Lake Michigan water, they were getting uh, their water elsewhere. So Glenflora uh, Mineral Springs, they're still operating. Again, they operate till 1915. Uh, so the, the Wheeler family, are, some of them are getting their water from there. And the artesian well mentioned here, it looks like the artesian well was uh, the original uh, what, uh, spring that Elijah Haynes owned, the Saga Nash uh, Spring. So the owners of the mineral springs were originally sending their water out to people. That was their business. Uh, a few of them quickly evolved to uh, really turning Waukegan into a health resort destination, drawing people in from neighboring communities and neighboring states. And with advances in medicine, the owners resorted back to their old ways of sending out bottled water. They still were claiming their water would cure ailments, but now they were also touting that their water was clean and it did not contain pollutants and contaminants. We have a pretty good amount of some of the bottles from these springs. Here I grabbed a couple to take a picture to show you. Uh, one from the Glenrock Spring, uh, another a big jug uh, from the Glenflora Springs. And then we even see other hotels um, at the time advertising that they uh, have the spring water for their guests to enjoy. 
um, even into the later years past uh, the era of the Mineral Springs, the Hotel Clayton is uh, advertising the famous uh, Hotel Clayton water, which most likely was coming from the artesian well. Today's uh, Mineral Springs, or well, in Waukegan, that era is long gone and those uh, springs have been capped off. But for around 20 years though, the Mineral Springs, it was big business in Waukegan with people coming from all over to come uh, drink the water, enjoy it, and hopefully cure themselves of all their, all their ailments. So I hope you enjoyed uh, a little bit of story about water today. Uh, the Mineral Springs era, it's definitely unique. We, uh, of course, still uh, are into that bottled water business today. Um, so it really hasn't gone away. It just uh, isn't happening from uh, Waukegan anymore. So thank you again for joining me for another uh, Waukegan History Museum Lunch and Learn. I will be on again next Friday at noon with another Waukegan history story to, sh to share. I haven't picked a topic yet, uh, so we'll, we'll just see. Um, again, everyone have a great weekend. Uh, take a moment to celebrate and reflect on Juneteenth, and everyone please have a great Father's Day on Sunday. Dad, thanks for listening. Happy Father's Day. So, this is it for now. I look forward to talking about the past with you in the future. This is Ty Rohr signing off.